sometimes when I'm like laying in bed and I'm about to knock out and I could just hear it ticking, I'm like, oh no, I have to get up. I can't fall asleep like this. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. Today's episode is sponsored by IFL Watches. More on them later. And today we're talking about my personal watch collection. But instead of talking about all the cool and expensive gold stuff like this GMT Master I've got here, which is not stainless steel, my friends. Can you hear it? Uh, we're going to be talking about the affordable stuff, like the really cool, neat uh, uh, stuff that starts affordable at $2,500, one of my favorite watches under $5,000 that I'll talk about in a second. And then we're going to go down to like $100, and then we're going down to $70. And it's, it's a, I think it's amazing. I think that the fact that we're dedicating a whole episode to Especially two really, really like you know cheap watches, uh, and and you'll be the judge whether or not someone that's really into kind of you know flashy stuff can can have a genuine appreciation for no frills watchmaking, if you want to call it that. So the first watch I want to talk about, which is by far the most expensive watch we'll discuss today, is coming from the Longines Master Collection. This is an amazing watch. This salmon dial automatic time-only piece that I picked up last year. Actually, I saw this watch as a, as a member of the watch press a couple of months uh, before it was released. Um, that's not abnormal by any means if you are in like, you know, the watch press circles. The brands want to show you the pieces so you could develop your own, you know, real life opinions on them, right? Having them in the metal as opposed to just reacting to photos that come out. I think it's actually a really smart way to give a watch its best chance, right? As, as we all know, we could do our best by reviewing a watch with photos. We can get some things right, but there's nothing, you know, that replaces really holding a piece in your hand and really getting a sense for the weight and the proportions and the finishing and all that stuff, right? So long story short, I had seen this watch before, it had been come out publicly, and I thought it was amazing then. I mean, it was from the minute I saw it, especially in, in, in the salmon dial, which is inevitably what I got, I knew I had to have it, right? They also make it in a silver, and also in like this kind of like anthracite black kind of color. I love this watch, right? I, I'm a big, big Longines fan. This was not my first Longines. I have the Big Eye as well. I'm not talking about that one today, but I have that. I've, I've got a couple of other things that I really love from the brand. Um, they represent so much value, so much bang for your buck at $2,500. It measures 38.5 millimeters in diameter, a little over 10 millimeters in um, in thickness, which I think is great, and 20 millimeters at the lugs. Uh, the dial has just these beautifully carved Breguet numerals. They're not hand carved, but they do look that way. They have that really really old style um, engraving that I think is amazing. Brushed dial. Um, long story short, I've talked about this watch before. This is a, just a phenomenal dress piece, well under $5,000. Again, $2,500, can't beat it. I gravitate toward this watch all the time, particularly when I'm trying to, you know, look Present, you know, professional and presentable, but not looking to be like kind of a show off, which sometimes you can look that way with, let's say a Rolex or with a Cartier, you can look a little bit, look a little bit over the top. When I go to my Longines, it, it is just saying that you're clean, that you're detail oriented, that you're professional. It's kind of like an intelligent man's watch, if, if that is such a thing. I, I'm sure there's, there's some truth there. Um, I love this piece, okay? I picked this watch out because again, I wanted to focus on the more, you know, approachable end of, of my collection, which has grown a bit, you know, in the last 10 years. Um, but recently, I've just been so aware of how often I reach for the affordable watches in, in, in my watch box. It's, I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat, right? I've got some other stuff, some more expensive stuff. Um, I'm wearing a more expensive watch right now. But the truth is, I reach for that Longines a minimum of, and keep in mind, I wear at least, I usually wear two watches a day. But I reach for that Longines two to three times a week, which represents a pretty significant portion, right? If I'm if I'm wearing 14 watches per week and I'm wearing my Longines three three of those times, that's a lot, 
right? So this is a fantastic watch. Today's video is sponsored by our friends over at IFL Watches who have just announced their new collection, uh, which is an aviator's dream. The G-Shock, Casio, Spitfire, and Supersonic Limited Editions. And with them, the past and future of aviation land right on your wrist with these just incredible, I mean, look at this hand-painted dial. This is amazing. So these are two exclusive limited editions that live in a tribute to the daring spirit of aviation, encapsulating the essence of aerial excellence and the thrill of breaking boundaries. IFL is always celebrating this idea of, of breaking boundaries and celebration. IFL's formula is, is, is very simple, right? But the, but the execution is super complicated, right? They, they love to, they love to mix uber reliable, widely loved watches like the Cassioke or like the Tissot PRX or like Citizen, all these different amazing watches, but then put a totally unique spin on them, right? Usually with these gorgeous hand-painted dials. I mean, take a look at the beauty of this dial, not only just the color and, and, and just the different blues here, but also just the detail. It's unbelievable. And then the messaging behind them is often just as uplifting or fun or, or whatever, or playful. And these are really the reasons why we love our friends over at IFL Watches so much, right? They're delivering quality and reliability with limited production, incredible attention to detail and, and hand finishing. I mean, and, and by the way, generally speaking, on the, really on the affordable side. It's amazing. Each of these watches, the Supersonic and the Spitfire are limited to 100 pieces worldwide. Uh, the Supersonic is an homage, of course, to Supersonic Travel, featuring a resilient octagonal metal bezel and a beige textile band reflecting the elegance of mock speed. And that Spitfire brings the art of aviation to the wearer's wrist, you know, resonating with the legacy of the Spitfire. Uh, it's a piece that promises impact, celebrating the art of flight and the souls who have mastered the skies. Again, each collection is limited to 100 pieces worldwide. IFL watches always sell out very, very quickly. The world seems to always wait for the next IFL release. So whether or not you're able to snag one of these two amazing watches, again, each limited to only 100 pieces, definitely take a look at the IFL website. There are so many incredible watches on their site at all times that I really love. Specifically, you know, their G-Shock collections are just they're just amazing, you know? Uh, while I have my G-Shock that I love, these are way cooler and way better. And I can't wait to get my own uh, in the mail, which should be coming soon. So head on over to iflwatches.com and secure one of your limited edition pieces uh, today. See you on over at iflwatches.com. The next watch I wanna talk about is a watch that I never thought that I would wear own, period. This is a G-Shock DW5600GL-9. That's reference number means absolutely nothing to me. If someone asked me that reference number on the street, I would have no idea what they were talking about, uh, or I would have no idea what to tell them. To me, it's the yellow green one, and that's it. Uh, I'm not really a G-Shock guy. Let me tell you what I what I think of when I think of G-Shock, and this is a compliment to G-Shock, right? I think of the 1980s, right? The birthplace, really, the birth era of the G-Shock, and I think of the 1980s basically being you know, kind of a, a decade of two watches. I think of the Cartier Santos Carré, the massive, right, in, in, in gold, the Gordon Gecko watch. And then I think of the G-Shock, right? For some reason, those kind of grainy photos bring me to those two places, right? To that, you know, Wall Street banker, you know, just height of 80s capitalism, gold Cartier, to, you know, college guy with high socks and chunky sneakers, like my dad, right? Wearing his black G-Shock. What? Well, why are you laughing? It's spot on. Yeah, it's, it's spot, spot on, on right? <laughs> with kind of like curly-ish hair. Yeah, I see it right you now. Know? <laughs> exactly. Those are, the two, those are the two styles of the era, and I don't think that one defines the era any better. Like, those are the two styles, you know? And so, for, so in that, I love it. I actually like the G-Shock with that in mind far more than than like the historical idea of building the watch that never breaks. Like that doesn't resonate with me that much, right? I wear delicate, relatively speaking, watches all the time and they've never broken on me. So I, in my life, you know, I don't really have a need for a watch that never breaks because I don't do that much heavy lifting. You're a delicate guy. I'm a delicate guy, exactly. So that doesn't really resonate with me. But as an icon of a decade, of a really like, of a really like culturally, uh, uh, 
kind of powerful decade, that's really neat, right? And to think that that decade is 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 represented by two polar opposites, really cool. So to own a G-Shock to me is the perfect compliment to my Cartier Santos. And I'm not just picking out those two watches because I own them both. I really, really think that they equally represent the era. Now this watch is a freaking, ma it's massive. It's 48.9 millimeters by 42.8 millimeters and 13.4 millimeters thick. This watch is by all measure way too big for me, but it's supposed to be big. It's supposed to like kind of be chunky and big on your wrist. So it works. I don't wear this watch that much. I wear this watch to play pickleball. I mean, truthfully, that's really what I wear it to. I think maybe I've worn it one or two other times on like a Saturday morning to go get bagels or something. But I really do not wear this watch very often. But I love it, right? When I went all over the G-Shock website looking to pick out my G-Shock, this one jumped out at me so quickly. Uh, I really do love some of the other G-Shocks. No, no plug. I really mean this. But on IFL's website, IFL Watch's website, their G-Shocks are amazing. They do such a good job customizing them. And I swear that is not a sponsorship portion of this that comes later. But, but you know, they're amazing, right? I love the idea of a colorful, fun, neat G-Shock, right? There's, there's something to be said about having fun with kind of a, I don't know, just a playful watch and a playful price point. There's something fun about that. I, I really, really enjoy it. So when I wear my G-Shock and I'm wearing my white Lacoste polo and my short shorts and my chunky Sambas to the pickleball court to get my ass kicked by a 17-year-old girl, that's fun for me. That's fun for me, you know? So I really like this watch. And again, I get a lot of, even though I don't wear it that often, relatively speaking, I get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of it when I do wear it. straps, um, as many of you should know, bring a whole world of potential to mix up your watch collection. They breathe new life into watches. They help you pull out different colors. They, they give them new personality. Straps can be uh, very addictive. I know people with two watches and 10 straps because it adds so many facets to a collection in a, in a fairly you know, easy and fun way. So that's why they become such a part of the Theo and Harris you know, culture and identity. I think we sell more exotic straps than, than almost anybody because I just love them so much. I love sharing them with you. And the third watch I want to talk about is sold out. You can't get it. It's gone. It was 75 bucks. Now they're on eBay for double that, if you can believe it, which isn't that much money still. But still, it's crazy. It was the Swatch Neon. Now, I reach for this watch all the time. And I'm going to tell you why it's one of my favorite watches. And then I'm going to tell you why I absolutely hate this watch towards the end of this. Right. So number one, I saw this watch for the first time when I was in Milan. Okay, I was I was in Milan with some with some buddies, and we were all wearing really really great watches. And I looked at another guy, and he was wearing this watch. And I looked at his wrist, and I was like, "What are you wearing? Like, why? Are, like, kind of why are you wearing like a like a great watch? We're all wearing great watches, like for fun." And he's like, uh, oh, "I'm not going to wear something expensive. We're in Milan, and I don't want to you know, risk it." And I was like, "Okay, but that's really cool. Is that vintage? Because Swatch used to make these really well sized, uh, you know, 34 millimeter vintage colorful watches." Watches. And he goes, no, it's new. It's the Neon. I said, whoa, that is so cool. Can I try it on? There's a whole table full of expensive watches, and they were awesome. This is the watch I tried to, I actually tried on, right? Th which is super, like, that, that says a lot, you know? I immediately bought one, like, the next day. It, it was a no-brainer for me. It was one of my favorite things I bought in Italy that time around. And, uh, and I wear it all the time. Okay. It's got these super cool discs for the day and for the date. Uh, it's just colorful and wild, and it's $75. So what what could happen? You know, I also have such an emotional connection to Swatch because it was my first watch back in 2004, the Greek Olympics. Like, I love this watch, and it was so cool to represent like this full circle in my watch collecting journey. Right? I love it. You know why I hate it? And anyone that owns a Swatch can relate to this. You know how loud it is at night? My Timex is like that. Oh my God, it's insane. I'd pay 200 bucks for this watch if it didn't make the noise. <laughs> if I, it was sometimes when I'm like laying in bed and I'm about to knock out and I could just hear it ticking, I'm like, oh no, I have to get up. I can't fall asleep like this. Now, these watches are so loud, it's unbearable um, to a delicate person like me. And I then I get up and I go put it in a different room and that's annoying. Watches are supposed to tell you time, not cost you time. And, and uh, 
anyway, I do love the watch, but that is an annoying piece. And the point of this video, guys, is I'm, I'm listen. I'm sick, and I'm just trying to take a step back and look at look at some of the really fun watches in my collection that aren't worth a lot of money. The Longines is, is certainly not cheap, but it represents a heck of a lot of value. Let's get real. Uh, but some watches that I have a lot of fun with, they're colorful. By the way, I wear this watch multiple times per week, uh, for sure. And as you all know, my, my main driver behind this channel so often is having fun with watches. That's why I love Nomos, right? It's a brand that is so involved in color. That's why I've given Hublot some credit when they put these colorful chronographs out there. I really like them. We talked about Elton John in the episode just before because his watches hit auction and some of the prices were a little bit crazy. I don't, I don't necessarily think that you should go out there and, you know, dress crazy every day because people are going to think you're crazy and it's because you are crazy probably. But when it comes to your watch, you, 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 no reasonable person is going to think you're a nut job because you're wearing a, a pig watch, right? Whereas obviously if you dress like Elton John every day, you know, maybe, right? He was being paid millions of dollars, right? I mean, it's different. And we see these people in the East Village a lot, right? And I'm not doing business with them because they're unreliable. And they're not going to come to work. Let's get real. Look at them. They're, you know, they're not, they're not their best advocates, you know? Uh, but to wear a pink watch just says that you like to have a little bit of fun. You know what I mean? The pink watch is the equivalent of the mullet, what the mullet was in the 80s, right? It was, listen, guys, I'm super serious. I'm business in the front. I'm going to have a little bit of party in the back. You know, that's what that is. You know, it's like the, it's kind of like the, yeah, I don't, it's a really, it's just a really uh, a harmless way to wink at the world and say, hey guys, I swear I'm a good time, you know, and that's nice, you know, not everything is as serious as a stainless steel Submariner, you know, not, you know, not everything needs to be as obnoxious as an Aquanaut, right? Like there are places for those things for sure, but, but A, having more fun. And in respect to the Longines, B, kind of like treating your money like with respect and saying, wow, like I can actually get a, I don't need to spend five or $10,000. I can get like this amazing watch of 2,500 bucks that has so much history and finishing and blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, that's really cool. Maybe, maybe this is my way out of the rat race of watches. Not to say you're not going to buy more, but it's like, wow, that was, I mean, that was a smart buy. You know, I love that stuff. I always have. Many of you people have been watching this, you know, channel for the last nine years. I was, I was, I was 19 when I started on YouTube. Believe it or not, but my messages remained so similar, right? And if you guys remember, right, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was pack, pack more punch than it costs. You know, I mean, that was it. I was value-driven propositions, right? I've been saying that forever. Uh, but it's true. And I look at my collection now from my Longine to my Swatch and Casio. And while they're not, you know, you know, the, 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 the watches I get the most like clout and credit for in the watch world, there are other watches that I have that get more attention. These are watches that end up on my wrist a lot of the time. Right. Same thing with John Goldberger. Right. Well, he's a way better collector than I am. Right? But the principle remains. It's like, yeah, you've got some great stuff, but he ends up with a Tudor Black Bay bronze on the wrist a lot. It's like. It's a great watch. It's a great watch. You know, it's a great watch. And sometimes you just want like a, just a great, fun, reliable watch that puts a smile on your face. Doesn't, not everything needs to be a museum piece. You know what I mean? Like you may have a, a cool old Mont Blanc on your wrist right now. And you're like, yeah, this watch has been to war with me and back. And that's cool. It puts a smile on my face. And I know it's only worth a third of what I paid. I don't really care about that. And it's just fun. It's like, yeah, it's fun. My Casio is fun. My swatch is fun. I'll never, I'll never not have a few swatches in my collection. You know, from the Greek Olympics to this, and and God knows what's next down, you know, down the down the pike. I mean, they they also made this neon and this big forty six millimeter chronograph, which wasn't my style, but it's like this watch just spoke to me. This watch was straight back to the, you know. 80s and 90s, you know? So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you want more content from Theo and Harris, go ahead and like this video and join our Patreon over at The Zero. Uh, and I hope to see you on over there. If you aren't already a member, go sign up for a seven-day free trial and enjoy all of our content. It's a great look behind the scenes at, uh, at our thoughts into the watch industry. Hope to see you on over there. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals.